In a seismic upset at the Paris Masters, world number two Carlos Alcaraz's quest for glory comes to an abrupt halt, derailed by the relentless underdog Roman Siafalin. The practice court's promise, where Alcaraz danced past Djokovic, shattered in mere hours as dreams of a heavyweight finale fade to black. So what led to Alcaraz's fall at yet another crucial juncture of the tournament circuit? Carlos Alcaraz, Spain's ace and world number two, faltered dramatically on his comeback trail, blindsided by the unyielding force of Roman Siafalin, a Russian qualifier who stormed through the match at Paris Masters with a decisive 6-3, 6-4 victory. He didn't surprise me at all, because I knew that he has been playing a great level these last few months, beating big guys, reaching finals, said a disconsolate Alcaraz. I knew that he was going to play a high level. Despite Alcaraz's early leads, Safi Ellen, the world number 45, mounted a fearless counterattack, dismantling the Spaniards' defenses to clinch each set. Alcaraz, fresh from injury and a last-minute entry, confessed to his subpar condition a shadow of his peak performance that had previously garnered significant sports sponsorship deals. I just didn't feel well, you know, on the court, Alcaraz said. A lot of things to improve, a lot of things to practice. I think I didn't move well. In the shots, I think I had a good quality of shots. But physically, in terms of movement, I have to improve a lot. Against the backdrop of a first-time clash with the formidable Carlos Alcaraz, Roman Safiullin emerged as a relentless force, clinching a monumental career-enhancing victory. Under the immense pressure of a face-off with a Wimbledon champion, the 26-year-old Russian showcased nerves of steel, holding serve amid a nail-biting succession of deuce points to triumph in the final game. It was tough. Since qualies, I was not playing at this level, but against Carlos, you have to lift up the level, Safi Ellen said. Carlos was not at his best performance, but I'm still happy I could win because he is number two in the world, former world number one, and has two grand slams. It is tough to beat him even if he is not in the best shape. Following his defeat at the Paris Masters, Alcaraz candidly acknowledged in the post-match interview that there remain crucial aspects he must refine for the season's closing tournaments. I don't know. Uh, uh, probably the, the, the season, uh, it's been so, so long. Probably uh, that affect uh, in my game. Uh, but uh, I don't know. I think the, this tournament has a lot of a lot of surprise. Uh, I don't know because it, if it's uh, you know the end of uh, of the seasons, players are tired. or not. But uh, talking about myself, uh, I don't know honestly. I have to to figure it out, and uh, I'll try to uh, the next next years to to be better in the in this part of the year. The recent loss of Alcaraz could as well be explained by how things changed in the tennis world. The tennis circuit has been rapidly evolving and the level of competition has reached new heights. And this makes players like Roman Safi Ellen, ranked 45th in the world, to be now formidable opponents from the first serve of a tournament. Gone were the days when top 10 players could ease into a competition. Now they have to be on high alert right from the start. Apart from that, Carlos Alcaraz's strategy in the Asian Tour and the year-end tournaments may have been misguided, drawing parallels with Rafael Nadal's career trajectory. Despite his moderate success, it's crucial to re-evaluate tournament prioritization. Nadal's experiences post-US Open serve as a cautionary tale, highlighting the importance of a balanced approach toward the end of the season. Now, a common thread in Alcaraz's losses is in his unwavering commitment to his aggressive style of play. While Novak Djokovic, Rafael Nadal and Roger Federer have earned their legendary status by adapting to any situation, Alcaraz often sticks to plan A even when his shots aren't landing. It's an admirable trait on his good days where he can decimate even the best opponents. However, it also makes him susceptible to upsets on his off days. Then there's the serve. Although Alcaraz has improved it significantly, it's not yet the reliable weapon that top players like Federer possess. Even on his worst days, Federer's serve was a fortress that could help him escape tough situations. 
A prime instance where Alcaraz demonstrated room for improvement in his serve and alternative strategies unfolded in Shanghai, Asia. In the Shanghai Masters round of 16, the showdown between Alcaraz and Dimitrov commenced with an intense exchange of errors and brilliant shots. Dimitrov surged ahead, claiming a 3-2 lead in games with a dazzling forehand return. However, the pendulum swung as Alcaraz fought back, snatching the pivotal break and leveling the set at 5-all. With determination, Alcaraz held his serve and secured another break, stunning the crowd as he claimed the set in under an hour. It seemed like Alcaraz was destined to conquer the Shanghai Masters. But the second set saw Dimitrov roaring back, unleashing precise and powerful shots that earned him a two-love lead. Another crucial break extended Dimitrov's dominance to 5-2, and the set slipped from Alcaraz's grasp as his return misfired. As they ventured into the decisive set, an uncharacteristically shaken Alcaraz faced a break in the third game, prompting a frustrated roar. Dimitrov, however, remained unflappable, sealing his first victory over the Spaniard on the second match point. Alcaraz, wearing disbelief on his face, suffered a shocking 7-5-2-6-4-6 defeat at Dimitrov's hands. In terms of statistics, Alcaraz's first serve percentage stood at 71% behind Dimitrov's 73%. The points won serving first favored Dimitrov 73% to Alcaraz's 69%. Dimitrov managed to save three out of five breakpoints, while Alcaraz salvaged only one out of five. Unforced errors told a tale too, with Alcaraz committing six compared to Dimitrov's 12. Dimitrov's brilliance on serve was evident, tallying ten aces at crucial junctures, dwarfing Alcaraz's four. Reflecting on the match, Carlos Alcaraz admitted, I was all the time defending. I could not find a way to put myself in a position to attack. He acknowledged Dimitrov's exceptional performance, saying, He was on another level today, this Grigor. While Alcaraz fans may point to previous victories, Dimitrov's persistent backhand and net prowess have always posed challenges. This marked their fourth encounter, with three taking place in 2023, shedding light on Dimitrov's well-executed game plan and comprehensive approach. Another factor contributing to Alcaraz's decline could be the relentless social pressure he faces. Fans of the young Spaniard often find themselves oscillating between exhilaration and anxiety. Social media explodes with praise after a victory, yet harsh criticism follows any unexpected loss. The world of tennis has become a realm of extremes, and this shift may significantly impact Alcaraz's mindset. Since his Wimbledon victory, Alcaraz's form has been on a steady decline. He exited the Canadian Open in the quarterfinals, followed by a gripping Cincinnati Masters final against Novak Djokovic, but ultimately settled for a semi-final finish at the US Open. The China Open yielded a similar outcome, and his journey at the Shanghai Masters was cut short in the round of 16. The low point came with the recent second-round exit in Paris. It's worth remembering that some tennis pundits started to compare Alcaraz to Djokovic, Nadal and Federer. While he's often seen as the heir to the Big Three throne, his late season slump serves as a stark reminder that there's still work to be done. Despite his impressive stats and titles, there are aspects of his game and schedule management that require refinement. In a post-Big Three era, Alcaraz's contemporaries have struggled to make a significant impact. Djokovic remains a dominant force, and apart from Alcaraz, no one has come close to challenging the Serb. At just 20 years old, Alcaraz boasts two Grand Slams, four ATP Masters titles, and the 2022 year-end number one ranking, surpassing the records of the Big Three at his age. The iconic trio, known for their competitiveness and mental fortitude, have repeatedly rebounded from setbacks and extended absences. Nadal and Federer, for instance, began 2017 ranked outside the top eight and winless at the last 10 Grand Slams. Yet, they roared back to claim six of the next majors between them. Djokovic, too, rebounded with a Cincinnati Masters and US Open victory after a disappointing Wimbledon final loss this year. To truly enter the league of these iconic players, Carlos Alcaraz must elevate his game. 
He already boasts the talent and numbers, but it's persistence that will propel him to greatness. Under the elite coaching of Juan Carlos Ferraro, Alcaraz will continue to refine his skills and secure his place among the tennis greats. But one thing is for sure, the downward trend that started in August 2023 at the Canadian Open seems to have continued, and it has resulted in Carlos Alcaraz losing his number one spot to Novak Djokovic. Reclaiming the number one position before the year end seems now increasingly challenging for Alcaraz, if not impossible. As his sole chance to reclaim the top spot slips away, the burning question looms large. Can Carlos Alcaraz halt his downward spiral, or will he crumble under the mounting pressure? Only time and the upcoming ATP World Tour Finals hold the answer.